So this is the original bathroom of the house and um, the plan is to marbleize this um, kind of a uh, pinky brown original laminate that is surrounding the sink and the other plan is to paint the pinky brown tile. I have both a 60 and an 80 grit sandpaper. I have a 100 grit as well, but I find the surface is so smooth and I'm needing to use the heavier, coarser sandpaper to kind of scratch up that surface. And the paint I'm using is a base coat, and this was a recommendation from Home Depot, is CIL Smart. And this paint is 100% um, acrylic and it bonds to any surface and blocks stains in one coat. So it's like an ultra super great primer. So I've got the um, laminate painted. The nice thing is, is that we don't care if I go um, in the areas that are going to get painted gray. And I don't care if I go on the trim because the trim is going to be white. Anything you see that's pinky, peachy is going to end up being gray. And so I had to make sure that I did the edges as well of the um, vanity. And I'm working on the wall right now. As you can see, there's a narrow space behind the toilet tank. But I'm going to do my best to get the brush in there. And um, as I'm going along, I'm finding sometimes just going a little bit vertical to get into the cracks and then angling and going across horizontally and that way it just gets good coverage. This is um, a thicker paint and um, but it certainly gives good coverage. So anyway, I'll uh, report back. Okay, so I've got the tile painted. I got in behind the toilet as best I could. Um, I'm not too panicked about it. I know I could have removed the tank but I don't want to. So this is good enough. The girl at Home Depot even said that it wasn't necessary to even sand the tiles first because this primer sticks so well. So I always wrap my brushes in plastic bags in between painting. So I'll be reusing that brush with the white after I'm done the ceiling. And here's behind the uh, door. Okay, ready for the marbleizing step here of my laminate. So I have um, the color card I have from Bayer. This is the uh, order here. And it's just a darker gray with a bit of a purple tint, medium gray, lighter gray, and then I got a white as well. Um, this medium or light gray here is what color I've done here around the sink just as a first coat. Now I'm going to practice over here on a vintage dresser. It's actually my childhood dresser and I have uh, painted it purple and then the top I've just given it a coat of the white and it's still wet. So I'm now going to start sponging in the grays. So looking at this piece I want to think Marble, I don't want to think spotty. Um, granite is more spotty, whereas marble, I think, tends to have more clusters of color and veins. So I think the key thing when doing the spots is to move along and not get dot, 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 dot. Because I've seen where people end up with a zigzag look because they're doing their uh, spotting to organize instead of randomly. So I try to think more randomly. So I'll show you each step as I go. Okay. 
All right, so what I've done, here's the left, going across to the right. So I'm just going to try and back it up so you can see the whole thing. So just using the rag, this is the rag here, and just holding it, dipping it in the paint, and just going splot, splot, splot. And in some areas I wanted it heavier and darker. There's a couple holes where a mirror would be, and I went darker around them to kind of hide the holes and I'm just thinking marble with the veins so now I'm gonna I can always come back to black and add the darker color and add more but now I'm just gonna start putting in the medium gray the key thing too is to put the tape so that it can naturally go right off the edge you don't want to have it look like you stopped before the edge because of the edge because marble doesn't grow that way so um, just put the tape so you can feel confident to just blot your way right over the edge. Okay, next step. So I've got a medium gray dipping in and I've started up here just tapping it in and I'm more or less going along the edge of the previous one and overlapping as well. It's okay if the colors mix. And we'll just sort of blend in on their own. I'm not rubbing, which I think is key. You don't want to have a rub look. I'm just tapping. You can always blot with the, if you put too much, you think. You can always take a clean section and just tap on top with the clean, and that'll take some off. So I just went over it with a bit of the comb. Alright, so I'll keep going with this one and then I'll show you the next color. Okay, and this is the light gray. Um, when I did that white as the base, when I started putting in these other colors, the white was still wet. And I, I wanted it wet so that the paint could do a little bit of blending on its own. So that it would um, look a little more natural with the colors. So I'm just kind of following along here with my veins of marble, full marble. Alright. Okay, so I think you can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing here. Alright. And I often will go back to all the other colors and spot them in as well because once you kind of get doing it, then you're like, oh, it would look better if it had a little darker here or a little lighter there. So. And there are a lot of open errors, areas on many pieces of marble. I mean, every piece of marble is totally unique, made by nature, of course. So, But lots of marble have open white spaces, so don't be afraid to have those open white spaces on the work that you're doing. I'll just back it off so you can see it so far. Okay, and there we go. Alright, so I've tapped white in here. Okay. And then the cloth is kind of, most of the white is up here. So the cloth has got still got white, and I'm going to do a little vein. Just kind of tapping down along this way to bring a white vein through. And I'll probably go over that again. And now, just by tapping elsewhere, I'm putting some, this is kind of my supply pile here, I'm tapping in some whites in random spots, just so it's like a little bit of that marble peeking through. And you can give a slight twist of the wrist so that it doesn't look um, all the same. You don't want all your spots to look identical.
And instead of rubbing, it would be better if you tapped more color on top. Okay, so I'm going to work on that white vein a little more. Can you see there? Hopefully it's starting to look a little more like marble. Okay, a little break and coming back, looking at it, I have my veins kind of going somewhat on a curve horizontally across. And I'm not bad with looking at it from this view, I'm mostly satisfied, but when I saw it from this view too, I'm thinking I need to build another vein going in that's crossing over this way. So I'm going to try working that in, see if I like it better. If I don't like it, you just slap more paint on top of it. No problem, it's just paint.